Richard, last year was a tragic one for uh, catastrophes. You had the earthquake in New Zealand, Fukushima, and then Thai floods. Uh, but I guess what a lot of readers might not understand is that, uh, however tragic, um, catastrophes are actually quite good for the re reinsurance sector. Uh, why is that? It's simply because just as whenever there's a disaster, it's going to be a great time to boost your premiums again and put them up. So you, they call it re-rating. They will go and re-rate their Australasian risk, their Asian risk, and basically charge more for a disaster in one area. Now, it's the same when you or I prang our car. Um, the insurers will put up the premiums for everyone that's on the road. So it's, it's a similar knock-on effect. And why doesn't the market sort of get it? Because as soon as a catastrophe does happen, you do get a sell-off in yeah. the reinsurance sector. It's totally irrational, isn't it? If you looked at the, the Christchurch earthquake, the New Zealand one sent shares down, I don't know, by about a fifth, and then they recovered a bit, and then along came Fukushima. There was another fifth down, and then it carried on down with the Thai floods. But then it sprung back 80%, so you'd be up on your money if you'd held on all the time, but you'd have done far better just to wait and buy into the bad and tragic news. And we had results from Swiss Re today. Do they back that up? Swiss, Swiss Re's results very much back that up. They've managed to up their premiums quite nicely, and their property and casualty combined ratio is looking pretty good. You want that to be well below 100%, and it's in the 80s, so probably 96 on a fully blended um, basis. But if you, if you look at their broad results, property and casualty, they've done pretty well and life and health less so they've had a few one-offs in there but broadly you don't just look at that you look also at the investment yeah, so they take the money in, in and then they invest exactly. it right so that money that they're investing they're getting four and a half percent on which is pretty outstanding considering where interest rates are and, and how are they getting such a big return on their investment portfolio hard to know but I mean I, I can see that they're, they're just savvy in their property and casualty, particularly they're adding 5.6, 5.7 in that, and I think it's just good investment strategy there. But what, what particularly should worry us is that they're also trying to accumulate capital, and all the time that they're accumulating capital and returns aren't quite keeping up, they're going to have a problem with depressed ROEs, and they've been below 10% in the last two full years. Um, they popped up to 15 and a bit percent in the first quarter, but they're back down to one. And remind readers how they fared during the finance crisis. Um, they fared absolutely atrociously. They, they in fact, had their own self-inflicted disaster. Not a man. It was well and truly a man-made one and not a natural one. Had to be bailed out by Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway. Sure. So, I mean, this is a re recovery story, and it looks a little bit like the comeback kid is in them. And now we've seen the uh, premiums return and increase again. Where do you expect the stocks to go from here? I expect the stocks just to drift slowly upwards, but uh, that's just building up. The ROEs are quite low or depressed still. I expect them just to trade very gently upwards until the next crash. And then, uh, I'm sorry to say, this is a very ghoulish thing to say, you should climb in straight away. Of course, no one wishes for more catastrophes next year, but it looks like things are going well for this sector. So thanks very much, Richard.